detail is the way that constructors work when you have inheritance. All right, talked about so far. And then talk about how those rules are impacted when um, we have inheritance involved. And then I would like to go and play around with the pizza code that we had to see um, uh, the impact to illustrate some of the points that I'm trying to make. First of all, the rule for constructors. This is when there's no basic inheritance involved. All right. If there's no constructor in code, then compiler inserts a simple constru constructor well, I am on the computer screen with no arguments. If there are constructors in code, compiler does not generate a constructor. All right. So that's, that's the rule that we've dealt with since we've talked about constructors. All right. So if you have, if you've defined a constructor, you don't get the no argument constructor that the compiler inserts. Which means that if you want a no argument constructor, then you have to write that in. You have to put that in. All right. Again, what is the purpose of constructors? The purpose of constructors is in one shot, creating the object and setting some parameters. Parameters can either be set a couple of different ways. One way is a parameter can be set by having an argument that sets that parameter. The other way that you can set parameters in a constructor is by defaulting the value. Let's take a look at the pizza class, and we'll just look at the pizza class. We won't look yet at the, at the sheet pizza class. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's look at the pizza class. In it, we have three constructors. First constru constructor accepts three arguments. All right? And that constructor sets the properties based on those values of the arguments. So the three arguments are size, crust, and pepperoni. Two strings and a boolean. The first one is the size, the second one is the crust, and the third one is whether it has pepperoni or not. So the first argument that comes in, we use that to set the size of the pizza. The second argument that comes in, we use it to set the 
type of crust. The third argument that comes in, we use it to, to set the size of the pepperoni. All right? That's all well and good. All right? And, and that can work that way. So we can set properties that way by passing arguments in. The other way that we can set prep, uh, properties in, I was going to say the other way we can set pepperonis in, the other way we can set properties in is <coughs> by defaulting them. So for example, this case, it has uh, two properties. A, uh, it, it gets past two arguments for two of the properties, the, the arg size and the arg pepperoni. Those get set from the arguments. The third property, the crust size of the pizza, gets set as a default. And again, a default makes sense if it's really a default. You know, if, if most of the people, you know, if, if when you say I want to order a pizza, maybe that means I want to order a thin crust pizza unless I say otherwise. You know, maybe people will say I want a deep dish if they want a deep dish. If they just say I want a pizza, the assumption is, is that it's a thin crust pizza. So in this case, we call, uh, we, we call the functions and we set the arguments to the values of the properties, except in this case we set a hard-coded value, so we default the value to thin. In this case, we have no arguments. This is a no argument constructor. Again, if we wanted a no argument constructor, we have to put it there because we've defined other constructors. And in this case, we default the size to medium, we default, we default the crust to thin, and we default pepperoni to true. All right, so that's our constructors, all right, in this case. How many constructors can you have? Uh, unlimited, you know, think of it as being unlimited. Constructors, though, need to be unique with, uh, by terms of the number and type of the arguments that the constructor has. So, for example, I could not have another constructor like this in the pizza class. This should largely be review, by the way. I could not have that. I could not have that and this one, let's put it that way. Why? Because these are two constructors that accept the same number and types of arguments. So this accepts two arguments, this accepts two arguments. This one accepts a string and a boolean, this one accepts a string and a boolean. So nope, can't do that. All right? What would you do? Uh, well, A cheap trick that we could get around this with would be simply to do this. Switch the order of them. So if we absolutely had to have separate constructors to one that set the size, one that set the crust, we could do that. Then the number and type of arguments aren't the same, because one has a string and boolean, the other has a boolean and string. The idea is this. When we call a constructor, oh, we don't have an example of that. Let me create a new one. If I create a constructor and I say pizza p equals new pizza and I give it a string and a boolean, Java needs to know which of the which constructors I mean. And if we had two constructors that were both defined with the same arguments, both in terms of number and type, then which one of those two does that refer to? Who knows? The compiler would have no way of knowing which constructor to point it to. So there has to be, um, you can have more than one constructor, you can have virtually unlimited constructors, but something has to be different in terms of the arguments, either the number of arguments or the type. And again, the type goes in sequence. So 
If the first argument's a string and the second's a Boolean, you can't have another one where the first is string and the second is Boolean. You could have one where the first is Boolean and the second is string. All right? Is that clear to everyone? Is it clear the purpose of constructors and why we even do these things? We set the properties. Again, we either, we either want to create it and set the properties as soon as we create it, or we want to be able to set some defaults. OK? So that's the whole purpose of these constructors. So this should largely be reviewed to you. Let's consider, though, what happens when you inherit. When you inherit, All your superclasses constructors get called before your constructor. So this is with inheritance. Think of it this way. Um, I hope it makes sense to you. It makes sense to me to think of it this way. If I have a sheet pizza, first it's a pizza, then it's a sheet pizza. All right? So I have, first have to make a pizza, then I can add the extra stuff to the object to make it a sheet pizza. If we had a case of a more complicated inheritance structure, let's say, where we had animal vertebrae. I'm not sure how to spell vertebrae. Mammal, dog, poodle. If we called the constructor for a poodle, first the constructor for the animal would fire off. Then the constructor for the vertebrae would fire off. Then the constructor for the mammal would fire off. Then the constructor for the dog would fire off. And then the constructor for the poodle would fire off. So this is called constructor chaining. So it goes from the superest superclass to the class itself. It goes down and it fires off the constructors going all the way down the list. All right, which makes sense. Maybe somewhere in this constructor here, I want to do something to one of the properties that's defined for a dog, or that's defined for a vertebrae, brate, or that's defined for an animal. Well, I can't do anything with those properties if those properties don't exist. So first I make an animal. Then I add the stuff that makes it a vertebrate. Then I add the stuff that makes it a mammal. Then I add the stuff that makes it a dog. Then I add the stuff that makes it a poodle. So the constructors go from the top down. All right? Now. Which of the superclasses constructors get called? All right. You can either specify which superclasses constructor gets called. Using the super command, that's option A. Option B is if you don't specify, the no argument constructor gets called. So 
I'm going to delete the no argument constructor from the pizza class. All right? That's kind of shaky to begin with, right? There, you know, what's the default pizza? You know, if you ask, you know, 10 people what's your idea of a typical pizza, you're going to get 10 different answers, right? So therefore, it doesn't really make sense to talk of a default pizza. Um, if anything, I would say, yeah, these these might be, these might be, um, these might be reasonable assumptions. I'm going to leave this duplicated constructor in just to show you this. Going to give me a compile error. Okay. I deleted the no argument constructor. I'm going to leave this duplicated constructor in just to show you a compile error that it gets. Part of the, the task in learning uh, coding is the learning how to interpret the errors that the compiler gives you. So I'm going to make sure I save all these, except this one. And I'm going to go and compile this. Actually, let me go back. I'm going to put back the no argument constructor because I want to I want to show you what happens if I declare two constructors with the with the same sometimes called signature in other words the same list of arguments um, for a constructor so let me go save this then I will go and All right, this actually is pretty clear. A constructor that takes a string and Boolean is already defined in the class of pizza. So it sees this constructor, and then it sees you try to redefine it, and it tells you that that's an error. So that's a pretty obvious error message in that case. So the fix would be to delete this. All right. Let's go and get rid of this and compile, and that should take care of the error. And it does. Okay? Now I'm going to get rid of the no argument constructor on pizza. All right? So. Go and save that, and I'm going to compile it, and we're going to get an error. All right, and I want you to understand why we're getting an error. I haven't showed you all the code yet, unless you have a, a photographic memory and you remember it from last time. All right, but we'll see exactly why we get an error. We'll see if we can figure out why we get an error. So I go and compile it, and it blows up. And the error gives me, and it says. No suitable constructor found for pizza, no arguments. And I have, it shows me the two constructors that are available for pizza. There's a pizza, and it tells me why they're not valid. All right, so compiler's really giving me a throw error message. It says this isn't right because the argument lengths the argument length, there's two arguments, or actually three arguments in this one, doesn't match no arguments. And this one doesn't work because there's two arguments, and that doesn't match no arguments. So the question is, is why is it expecting a no argument, uh, a no argument um, constructor for pizza? The answer to that is found in the sheet pizza class. So let's go to that and let's open it up. So 
I have no constructors in the sheet pizza class. What does that mean? That means that what gets called for the sheet pizza class is the no argument constructor that was inserted by the compiler. So the sheet pizza class is OK so far. However, remember that whenever you call a constructor on something, it actually goes up the chain and does them all down first. The problem is, is if there's no constructor in the sheet pizza, then I cannot possibly specify which of the super classes constructor I want to call, right? Because if there's no constructor, I can't say which of the super classes constructors I want to call. Therefore, it's going to call the no argument constructor for the pizza. And lo and behold, there is no no argument constructor for the pizza. We got rid of it. Why is there no argument constructor for the pizza? Well, because we've declared constructors, other constructors for the pizza, and that takes away the generated one. All right? So lesson number one, if you have no constructors on a subclass, it's always going to look for the no argument constructor on the superclass. Right? That's one conclusion that we should have. So let me write that down. If no constructors on subclass will always look for no argument constructor on the superclass. So either there's no constructors on the superclass, or we've defined a no argument constructor. That's how we were able to get away with it last time, if you remember. That's exactly why I put the uh, no argument constructor in the pizza class, so that I could create the sheet pizzas, and, and, and there would be a no argument constructor for that. OK, so how do I solve this problem? I can solve this problem one of two ways. I could either go and add back the no argument constructor to the pizza class, which, if you think about it, is probably not a good idea, right? There's really no such thing as a default pizza. We should probably have to know the values for those properties before we create a pizza. So I'm going to create some constructors on the superclass. Now, I don't have to, but it might be a pretty good strategy for me to match the constructors on the superclass. Did I say superclass? To match, to match the superclasses constructors in the subclass, and probably add in some more. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these guys over. So now I have to do one of two things. All right. Ah, I wish I didn't do undo. Let me go copy this code. Now remember, I have some extra properties here. 
So I'm going to, uh, with the sheet pizza, I have the stuffed crust property. So I'm going to default that to false in either of my two constructors. All right. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say create new sheet pizza S thin and false. So no pepperoni. All right. What's going to happen? I call my constructor to construct the sheet pizza with new sheet pizza, S, thin, and false. And I have a constructor now in here that accepts the argument for the size, the argument for the crust, and a Boolean for pepperoni. So this is a relevant constructor. All right? Is this going to work, though? Well, let's find out. Doesn't work. Sort of gives me the same kind of error. No suitable constructor. No, con no suitable constructor found for pizza. No arguments. Why is it looking for the no argument constructor? Go ahead. Oh, you look like you had the answer. OK. Because. We didn't specify using, oh, wrong sheet. Where did I write this? Ah, here we go. We can either specify which super classes constructor gets called using super. Did we do that? No. We did not have any line that said super in our subclasses constructor. If we don't, then get what gets called? The no argument constructor. So we had a three argument constructor on the, su on the subclass, but we didn't specify what constructor to call on the, the super class. Therefore, it called the no argument constructor. There is no no argument constructor, so boom, it's gone. So what can we do? This actually is pretty cool. Because remember the whole philosophy of inheritance is you code the differences. You code the differences. So what I can do is I can indicate, I can indicate that we need to change the screen. And then I can indicate that I simply want to call the supers constructor that has three arguments and give it the same arguments that I got. So I don't have to duplicate that code, the setting of the size, crust, and pepperoni, because that's what the superclasses constructor does. So now I am specifying what constructor I want. It's always going to call the superclasses constructor. It's just a matter of which one. If I don't specify, it's going to look for a no argument constructor. If I do specify, it will look, get that constructor. So I can call super arg size, arg crust, arg pepperoni. That will call not the no argument one, but it will call this one. All right. Set the size, set the crust, set the pepperoni. This will return set the stuffed crust. And boom, I'm in business. So now this code should work. Except 
I have a second sheet pizza, sheet pizza constructor that I didn't do anything with. All right? I should do the same thing for the second sheet pizza constructor. So I want the two-argument constructor on my sheet pizza to call the two-argument constructor on the pizza. And that will set the argument uh, for the size or the property for the size. It will default the property for the crust, and it will set the argument for the pepperoni. So now it should compile. Because again, in that constructor I didn't specify, therefore it assumed I wanted the no argument. I forgot I declared that other constructor. So now it compiles clean. All right? Now, a couple things I mentioned, but I'll demonstrate. This super has to be the first line. So I can't go and do this. Because that will also give me a compile error. And it actually gave me two errors. Because it wasn't the first line, it assumed I wanted the no, no argument constructor, which didn't exist. Secondly, it, when it finally did find the super, it said, hey, the super's in the wrong place. So we can go and put that back. So what happens when this constructor gets called? First it calls this one, because we've specified that one. It calls the three argument constructor on the superclass. If I did not specify that, it would try to call the zero argument constructor. And if one exists, fine. If one didn't exist, it would get an error. It does this all the way up the chain. So I call the constructor on this guy. It's going to call the constructor on that guy. If that guy had a superclass, it's going to go all the way at the top. So essentially, calling a constructor way down here is going to cause it to jump to the top and then go back and execute the rest of the code. So you have to do the superclasses constructor first. Questions about this? So if I call this constructor, what first happens is this. So it will set those three properties. And then I can default the stuff crust property, to this, in this case, to false. All right. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yes. So on your other uh, animal hierarchy, mm -hmm. would poodle extend animal or would poodle extend dog? Poodle would extend dog. Dog would extend mammal. Mammal would extend vertebrate. Okay. Vertebrate would extend so animal. Extend yeah, you extend. You 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 list your you list your uh, most direct superclass, the most direct, the parent class for it. All right. What if I want a four argument constructor for sheet pizza? One that will accept four properties, four arguments, arg size, arg crust, arg pepperoni, and a Boolean for whether it's stuff or not. Could you repeat that, please? Exactly. So in this case, when there's a three argument constructor on the sheet pizza, I call the three argument constructor for the pizza. In this case, when there's a two argument, I call the two argument. In the case of the four argument one, there is no four argument one for pizza, because there is no such thing as stuffed crust regular pizza in our scenario. 
In our scenario, only sheet pizzas have that stuff cross property. Therefore, there isn't going to be a four argument constructor that I can call. But what I can do is I can call the three argument constructor to set three of those properties. And then I can set this other property not as a default, but as the value of the argument. Which way are? Well, again, it, it's it's the, the same rule there for like, do you default a value or do you accept an argument for it, or do you do both? Again, the idea is is that where you have a case where there are reasonable assumptions that can be made about the the, the defaults. So if it's reasonable to assume, unless I hear otherwise, this is not a stuffed crust pizza, then I could make a constructor that didn't accept that as an argument. Um, you will always probably have a constructor that will set a lot of properties, because you're giving the value for those arguments, and therefore they can get plugged in. So any properties that you think are necessary to create this object, you can include as an argument. You may have. Uh, constructors with lesser arguments if it's reasonable to default some of the things. All right? In which case, yeah, you go and say, OK, yeah, they might not know all this information, or I might want to create this. Remember, you're talking about other code that's creating this. So I might say in another application, I don't know whether they have that or not. So therefore, I will uh, assume this for, for the value. All right, I can see where this would be confusing. Keep in mind, I didn't make this up. All right, this is the rules, this is the way Java works. And it's one of those things that after you work with it for a while, it sort of becomes just a second nature and, and you're used to it. At the very least, if you sort of know the rules that I specified, it will help you to interpret the error messages. Now, there's one more catch that we can do to make our code a little cleaner. And that is the use of the this property. All right? This means this object. It doesn't mean the superclass. It means whatever object we're talking about. So if I say this within the sheet pizza class, I'm talking about the sheet pizza object. If I say this within a pizza class, I'm talking about the pizza object. So I can actually write these a slightly different way. All right? I could write this method to say Okay, give me a second here. I could write this method to say this, arg size, arg crust, arg pepperoni, arg false. Okay? 
or uh, an argument of false, not arg false. What will that do? If I call the three argument constructor, it will say do this class's four argument constructor. So I will call this argument's four argument constructor, call the super class's three argument constructor, and then set this to the default, or set that to the value that I've given. Since we're defaulting it to false, it will set it to false. If you want to call, you can choose to do one of two things with your constructors as far as chaining goes. You can call either a super classes constructor by saying super, or you can call another one of your constructors by saying this. You can't do both. So in this case, if I call a three argument constructor, it will call this class's four argument constructor. It will pass those values up and add an, a default value for is stuffed of false. Then this method calls the super class, and everything's OK. So if you're going to call a super class's constructor or your own constructor, it needs to be the first line in the constructor. So this is legit. All right, I can do this. Let me compile it to make sure. There we go. That's OK. I can also do this in the pizza class. I can make the two argument constructor call this class's three argument constructor and take the two arguments that it gets and pass it up to the super class. And then finally, default the middle argument of the this, this, this kind of crust to thin. What's the whole reason that we do this? It just eliminates some code. It just simplifies it. If you noticed before, we had almost identical code here, except um, one of them we were accepting, a, uh, or two of them we were accepting an argument. The third we were putting a default. Here we simply call this, and, and that just simplifies this code quite a bit. All right? This is what's known, again, as constructor chaining, all these things that we talked about. And again, this is one of those things, how do I want to put it, that I want you to sort of plant these seeds in your mind. I can understand if they're a little hazy. All right? Um, try to remember the rules that I specified that will, that will help you remember uh, what you need to do as far as declaring constructors for these subclasses and superclasses. Uh, the rules again. To review those. If no constructor in a code, and this is true whether there is uh, superclasses involved or not. If there's no constructor in a code, the compiler inserts a simple constructor with no arguments. If there are constructors in code, the compiler does not generate that constructor. And in the case of inheritance, all superclasses constructors get called before your constructor. You can either specify what superclasses constructors get called using the super. If not, it will assume the no argument constructor. And finally, if there's no arguments on a subclass, it will always look for a no argument constructor on a superclass. The rest we can the rest is just a matter of using this and super to call the appropriate constructor is either on your own class or on, uh, on the um, super class. Questions? I want to look for a second. Let me save this. I want to look for a second on next week's assignment. Because next week is a different kind of assignment. Next week is not a programming assignment. It's a design assignment. 
the assignment is due next week. You don't write the code. You will design the solution. What do I mean by design? I mean, for the most part, come up with a class diagram and also come up with a test plan. All right? Use any drawing tool you want. Hand draw it and scan it. I don't care. But turn it in as either a PDF or a JPEG or part of a Word document or something. Don't turn in a Visio um, file. Let me know if you have issues doing that. Here are the rules. A library has patrons that check out a variety of materials. Books, new release books, DVDs, and new release DVDs. Okay? Those are the things that a person can check out. Each patron has these two characteristics, a name and an email address. All books have the following, an ID, a title, an author, the date that's checked out, if it is checked out, and the patron that has it checked out, if it's currently checked out. All DVDs have these things. All library materials, we should be able to determine the due date, if it's overdue, who has it checked out, and what the fine is based on the due date. Patrons should be able to tell if uh, how many items a patron has, if there's any overdue items, how many overdue items. A patron should be able to check out an item, and that should return either true or false. You can check out an item as long as someone else doesn't have it. All right? And you can check an item back in. Checking out an item is going to return true or false. True if you can check it out, false if you can't check it out. Check an item back in will, in, will return a late fee. So if you checked it in earlier on time, the late fee is zero. You checked it in, it was a day late, then you get charged for a day. Here are the rules for the checkout period and the fine. A new DVD you get for three days. A regular DVD you get for seven days. A new book you get for 21 days. A regular book you get for 28 days. And there's the fine. Yes? Are you including uh, No, you don't need to worry about holidays. We're, we're a rough... Uh, we're a rough library. It's like, yeah, you should have thought of that before you checked it out that it's due on Christmas. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that, would, that would really complicate the matter. Or we're not including like business days either, like if it's not open on Sunday or whatever. So you'll, and we'll spend some time next week talking about like functions that you can do on dates, like to determine how many days are between, between let's say September 20th and October 4th. How many days are between there? All right, we can calculate it, you know, people can calculate it, but there's Java code that will do that as well. Design the classes to address the requirements. Use inheritance. There's a, there's a way that you could possibly do that that doesn't use inheritance. I'm not going to sit and argue what the better way is. <laughs> this is my assignment, so you're going to use inheritance on it. All right, we will, I will devote some time in class working on this. All right, so... One, one thing we might do uh, on Monday of next week is I might talk a bit, I might answer questions, we'll probably review constructors, and then you might have time to talk to other people in the class and try to figure out the design uh, of this. Turn in your class diagram and test plan. Test, and there are things for both of these. There is a page devoted to, to, to class diagrams, there's a uh, page devoted to test cases. All right, scenario, test step, ex expected result, actual outcome. So the scenario might be a person checks out a book and returns it on time. Or the scenario might be a person checks out a book. And the expected result might be it returns true and they're able to check out the book. Then you say that. Person tries to check out a book that's already checked out. The expected result might be that the, the checkout function returns a false because it's already checked out. You can sort of skip this test step um, if you want um, because we're not working through a, through a GUI. We're, we're uh, embedding all our test cases into a, um, 
into our unit test class. Question? No, I was going to do that, but I decided not to. All right, I modified this assignment. This is a challenging uh, assignment, but we're going to spend a, uh, we're going to spend some time on it. So uh, hopefully we'll all do a good job, and we'll work together on it in class, and there'll be class time for it. So even though it's challenging, I hope it's one of those good challenges. Well, when you're done, it's like, well, okay, we wrote something, um, you know, pretty good. We could hook this to a GUI, and we'd be good to go. You only need to implement the requirements that are, are, are stated there. Um, so again, yeah, something like that that might actually be the case in a library. Uh, it, you know, if you have more than a certain amount of fines, then you can't check it out. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's something you don't have to implement. All right, that's all I had for today. Uh, questions? We'll see you up in lab.